Hello and welcome, I'm Dave. Today we will learn about Python errors and exception handling, and I'll provide links to all resources in the description below. I've got VS Code open, a folder for lesson 19 over here on the left. We haven't created a file yet, and I wanna start with a quick apology because at the end of the last lesson, I said we were going to move on to an object-oriented practice project. That would be OOP for Object Oriented Programming. And I said that was next, but during the week I realized that we should probably cover exception handling first. So we're going to do this quickly today. Next time I hope to move on to that OOP practice project. Okay, so you've probably seen a Python exception before. Let's go ahead and create one. And we can do that by creating a file over here in our file tree. And I'm going to just call this exceptions.py. Now inside of this file, I'm just going to say print X. Notice we haven't defined X. Visual Studio Code notes that and puts a little warning squiggly under here that says, hey, this isn't going to work, but we're going to go ahead and put this into action so we can see the exception. I'm going to choose run Python file here. And we see over here, and I'll drag this over a little bit more, and then I'm also going to do control B to hide the file tree now that we've created our file. We can see it says this is a name error. So this is a specific type of exception and it's telling us name X is not defined. So that's what an exception is. And now we're over here in the browser and I'm at W3 schools and they have a list of built-in exceptions that are built into Python. And I like the way they present this. It's just a simple table here. So the exception name is on the left and the description is on the right. Notice they each say raised. That's because in Python, we raise exceptions. If you're familiar with JavaScript, we can throw errors there, but here in Python, we raise exceptions. So on the left, we've got all of the exception names, and on the right, it says when they're raised. Now, all of these are built in, but we're also going to learn how to create our own custom exceptions today. Okay, we're back in VS Code, and we still have our name error over here on the right. And in our code, we are going to throw an error if we run this. So let's go ahead and handle this, and we do this in Python with a try block first. So I'm going to say try and put a colon, then I'll tab over our print X, which will still throw an error right now. And then we can have an accept block and this will catch the error. Notice now we don't have the squigglies we had earlier. This still says it's going to throw an error because VS Code is helping us out. But we can just say accept right here and this will catch all errors. Now this is a bit generic. You wanna be more specific and I'll show you how to do that. But at first I just wanted to show how you can catch pretty much anything right here. So we can catch this error and then we can print something when we catch it or do whatever we want. Like say print, there is an error. Now we won't get that specific information like we did here. Instead, we will get this, there is an error statement. Let's go ahead, save that, run the code just so you can see how it works. And now we have there is an error right here in our terminal. Now what I would rather do than catch all errors because this would catch everything and really we wouldn't get any useful information. It would just say there is an error. I would rather catch the specific error that might occur like name error. So now this will only catch the name error. Then I could say something here specific like, let's see, I'll say name error means something is probably undefined. I'm going to save that, but I'm also going to press Alt-Z to wrap the code down just in case I type a long line and we don't see it all underneath our terminal. So now that we have that and I run this code again, it's going to specifically catch that name error. And now we can see we have that statement. Name error means something is probably undefined but another error it wouldn't catch. So let's try something else here. Let's say up above our try except, I can say x is equal to two. And now I'm going to divide x by zero. And that's usually a problem also with mathematics when you try to divide by zero. So let's see what error we get when we run this code. And yes, we have a zero division error. So that's another error and it was not caught here in our accept block. It only catches the name error. So now we can provide another accept block to catch that specific error too. So zero division error, and we could print something here like, please do not divide by zero. And that would catch that specific error. So if we run that, we now see that message. And so we've caught two specific errors 
and that's still leaving everything else to be caught possibly by an accept at the end of this. But there's other things we can do as well, and it's not always bad to throw an error, that I said throw, there I'm thinking in JavaScript, to raise an error or let Python raise the error, like we when we had one when we didn't catch our zero division here in our own accept when it just was raised by Python. That's not bad either, because you really don't want to just put a blanket over everything and then not know what that error might be. However, after the accepts, we can also have an else. So let's say there is no error. Now we would get here. So inside of this else, I could say print no errors. Now, if we throw, I say throw again, there I'm going to say that probably too, too many times. Anyway, if we raise an error like the zero uh, division error, it's never going to reach this else. So let's go ahead and run this code again that should raise the zero division error. Here we go. And yes, we've got that please do not divide by zero. It never reaches the else. But if we go ahead and divide by one instead, so we should not have an error, and then we run our code, then we get our response here, which 2.0, and then we have no errors. So we made it to the else block. Now, one additional thing we can add here is a finally. Now in the finally block, this is going to happen no matter what. If we have an error, this will still reach the finally block. And if we don't have an error, it will also reach the finally block. So I'm going to say print, and inside of our print, I'm just going to say, I'm going to print, with or without an error. So either way, we run our code now and we get I'm going to print with or without an error. And if we switch this back to zero, save the file, run once again, we get our please do not divide by zero message from our zero division error, and we still get the print statement from our finally block as well. Now I mentioned a catch-all could be bad if we didn't get the information about the error, but there is a way to handle this. So let's go ahead and add that after we're catching the specific errors. Here we can say accept, and then we're going to say exception with a capital E as error. Now inside of this block, we will print the error. So let's test that out now by coming back up to our try block here. And I'm just going to comment out the division by zero, but I'll leave it there for you in case you want to get the source code from the link to the course resources. And now I'm going to say, if not type, and let's see X, and then we'll go is string because it's currently an integer. So it's not going to be type string. This should make it to this if statement then, or what's inside the block, and we'll say raise. And now we can raise a type error. This is a built-in error. So you can raise one of the built-in Python errors on your own. And with this type error, we're going to say only strings are allowed. And we'll save this. And now let's see, how we catch this. It should catch down in our accept exception as error and print the error. Let's see what happens. Yes, we get our only strings are allowed message from the type error. And now notice we didn't have to pass this in. I'll just temporarily say control X here to cut that out. I wanna paste it back in after I give you this example. Let's run this code one more time without that message in there. And now, we don't get anything at all. So really what we want to do is put a message in there so we can know. And we could even say type error only strings are allowed if we wanted to state that. But it's just going to be good to give some type of information when you raise an error on your own. So now I'm going to comment out these two lines and let's look briefly at creating a custom exception. And we can get more specific, but I want to give a generic way first. And this is to just say, raise exception, and then we can pass in a message. And I'm just going to say, I'm a custom exception. And we'll save that. Now this should automatically raise this exception. So when we run the code, that's what we get. I'm a custom exception right here inside of the terminal. But you don't often see a generic exception like this. Often the exceptions are named to specify what we expect that exception to be. So if you're creating a custom one, 
you can still give it a custom name and it should be descriptive. So we could say something like not a string error or something like that. I'm going to say, and by the way, they start out with class. I'm going to say just not cool error. And now of course this doesn't really describe much, but it's just an example. So I'll have just not cool error, which is a class. And then you must pass in exception right here as well. After this, I'm just going to say pass. We won't have any specific code to this error, but now, or this exception, but now I can raise this. So I'm going to copy this and instead of raise exception, which I will comment out here. So that is commented out. Now let's raise our just not cool error. And now we can pass in a message and say, this just isn't cool, man. And now we're ready to run the code once again, and we'll see what we get over here. And we get, this just isn't cool, man. So we've created our own custom exception with our just not cool error. And with that, that's really all you need to know to catch exceptions or to create your own when you need them. And I wanted to show you this before the OOP practice project because we will be creating one of our own. Now that said, remember to wrap at least a try block around what you're trying to do and then at a minimum, you'll need one accept, even if you're just catching each exception as error. But if you expect specific ones that are possibilities, it is good to, of course, create those as well. Remember, else is only going to happen if there are no exceptions. And finally, is going to happen whether there are exceptions or not. These aren't required, but you can add else and finally to your try accept blocks. Remember to keep striving for progress over perfection, and a little progress every day will go a very long way. Please give this video a like if it's helped you, and thank you for watching and subscribing. You're helping my channel grow. Have a great day, and let's write more code together very soon.